Time now for your forecast first. WRBL News 3 First Alert Weather. All right, so let's talk about this day planner coming out in your first alert forecast. A nice clear start. Whoa, what happened to the clouds? It's getting sucked out like a vacuum. This area of low pressure will change our whole weather for the better. When it comes to no rain, I think it'll be really refreshing, but still chillier than average. So you're going to love this first alert forecast. But here's the culprit. It's that area of low pressure just more or less stalled right now off the coast of Georgia, but that will change. We're going to see some drier air coming in this first alert forecast, which I think you'll enjoy. You see, right now we're looking at those temperatures anywhere around 40 to the low 40s. You're watching WRBL News 3 on your side. Straight ahead, a shooting on the Vista Road spurs multiple investigations all across Columbus. We are tracking the latest. Next, an exclusive with the local health care leader as the possible spread of the Omicron variant looms ahead for the holidays. Plus, in a story you'll see only on three, an Auburn police officer who, on his lunch break, saved a man's life. News 3 Evening Edition starts right now. On your side, this is News 3 Evening Edition. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for trusting News 3. I'm Teresa Whitaker. And I'm Phil Scoggins. New information in a developing story involving multiple police scenes in Columbus. We've now learned there is a death involved. Starting at Buena Vista Road, where police say one man was injured in a shooting in the parking lot of Wild Bill's Party Shop shortly after 2 this afternoon. The shop was cordoned off with police tape. Multiple shell casings were seen on the ground. Details about the victim's condition are unavailable at this time. Columbus police also responded to the Circle K at the intersection of Reese Road and Macon Road. Muskogee County Coroner Buddy Bryan says a male transported to the hospital from this scene has been pronounced dead. Police confirm that scene is connected to the shooting at Wild Bills. It's unknown if the deceased victim is the same person who was shot at Wild Bills. Our crews witnessed at least one person being detained. Meanwhile, police also responded to a third scene at Farmington subdivision farther down Macon Road in Columbus. A white SUV was towed from that scene. Again, police have confirmed all three scenes are connected. Stay with News 3 on air and online as we continue to gather more details. Turning now to our continuing coverage of the fight against COVID-19. The federal government says U.S. population growth is the lowest it's been since the founding of our nation, and they say COVID is one of the leading factors for the decline. This comes as the Omicron variant is now sweeping across the country, forcing the Biden administration to respond. President Biden is encouraging Americans to take necessary precautions as the Omicron variant threatens holiday plans. The president says the U.S. is better equipped to handle this variant and his administration is purchasing 500 million at-home rapid tests to send to Americans for free starting in January. We all want this to be over, but we're still in it. And this is a critical moment. We also have more tools than we ever had before. We'll be getting these tests to Americans for free. And we'll have websites where you can get them delivered to your home. President Biden also renewed calls for Americans to get vaccinated and boosted against COVID-19. CDC data shows unvaccinated individuals are eight times more likely to be hospitalized and 14 times more likely to die from COVID-19. Cases are surging in more than a quarter of the states across the country, including here in Georgia. But in Columbus, the surge has yet to take hold. WRBL News 3's Chuck Williams talked with Piedmont Columbus Regional CEO Scott Hill today. Chuck joins us now. Teresa, Phil, the hospitalizations in Columbus are low. Hill knows the Omicron variant is headed this way, and with that comes uncertainty. According to the Georgia Department of Public Health, there have been no reported cases of Omicron in the Columbus region. As of yesterday, there were 29 COVID-19 hospitalizations in the two Columbus healthcare systems, Piedmont Columbus Regional and St. Francis Emory Healthcare. The seven-day rolling average is right at that too, 29. Those numbers are way off the COVID peak. In January 18th of this year, there were 200 COVID hospitalizations in Columbus. Just back as far as September 7th, it was 90, 198. Listen to what Hill says on my podcast, The Chuck Williams Show. 
There are some areas of the country that never had a fourth surge, uh, based on what I'm reading. Yeah. And and so it's it's kind of th- no doubt that Omicron's here, right? I mean, the yeah. CDC just announced that uh, I think 73 percent of new cases are are, are, are Omicron, um, and you know we're still dealing with Delta too. Um, and so I think that some of the areas that are really kind of getting punched in the nose right now are areas that we're dealing with a fourth surge and now we got omicron coming through and there's a lot we don't know about the new variant and if it's going to drive hospitalizations you can listen to the entire podcast tonight at seven o'clock on wrbl.com phil Teresa, back to you guys thanks so much chucks chuck also spoke to hill for his sunday conversation that airs on news three sunday morning you can see that entire interview in the eight o'clock hour and as we head to the break again we want to thank you for trusting news three coming up an east alabama officer springs into action to save a life all while he's on his lunch break but first bob is keeping a close eye on the conditions outside for us and yes we are we're looking at that system just over my shoulder here. You can see how it's still hanging on. Good news is it's going to be replaced quickly with a dry front that's working down right across parts of Missouri right now in Illinois. They have forecast coming up. What? we got some clear skies. That's right. In the overnight, we'll talk about some sun, too. You're watching WRBL News 3 on your side. News 3 is on your side with Teresa Whitaker, Phil Scoggins, Chief Meteorologist Bob Jeswald, and Sports with Rex Castillo. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 Evening Edition. Tonight in a News 3 exclusive, we speak with the Auburn police officer who, while on his lunch break, saved a man's life. As News 3's Elizabeth White reports, this veteran officer hopes by sharing the story, others will feel encouraged to get first aid training so they too can save a life. 
Mm -hmm. What year did you start? 1986. 35 years as an Auburn peace officer, Captain Lorenzo Dorsey is a good man to have around in an emergency. Last Wednesday, while eating lunch in uniform. And I could see that there was a gentleman there that apparently choking. There was a gentleman behind him trying to do the Heimlich maneuver on him, and it wasn't working. He was still choking. It was a crisis. Uh, you know, I could just tell by his face, tell by his wife's face. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't going well. They and were they were very scared. And uh, when I took over, you know, my thing was is that I'm I'm just not going to give up on this. I'm going to continue. And like I said, about the third time, uh, you know, it came out, and he was able to recover and uh, and you know restored his airway. Come up to them. Are you choking? Are you choking? They're not going to be able to respond to you. They'll more than likely shake their head or something like that. You can also see there might be a blue color uh, in their lips or their fingertips or something. Auburn like that. firefighter so and advanced DMT that, Dustin Farmer demonstrates the maneuver, saying the Heimlich should only be used if the airway is completely blocked. Get them to stand up if they're able to. They're going to bend forward just a little bit. You're going to take your thumb, inner side, you're going to go above their belly button below their ribs. Take your other hand over cross. They're going to be bent over, and what you're going to do is you're going to push up in fast towards their diaphragm up underneath their ribs. So it's going to be a very quick up and in. Anyone can save a life really by learning CPR and, and the Heimlich going. from a trained professional. I'm just so happy and grateful that, you know, he's fine. Please reach out to your local fire department for more information. Reporting in Auburn, Elizabeth White, WRBL News 3, on your side. You're watching News 3 Evening Edition, and there's more news straight ahead. But first, here's a look at what you can expect tonight on News Nation. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation. I'm taking your Zoom calls. Join me live to debate and discuss the Kim Potter trial. I want to know what you think about the case. Prove your point and maybe prove me wrong. That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live. Now here's Ashley with a look at Banfield. Thanks, Dan. Tonight on Banfield, Gabby Petito's family gives back this Christmas. They're live with me tonight on their gift to the community and how they'll get through their first Christmas without Gabby. Plus, outrage over Louis C.K.'s new comedy special. But how long does cancel jail last? That's tonight on Banfield on News Nation. You can watch News Nation in prime time each night starting at 8 Eastern. Take a look at your screen to find News Nation on your television provider. We're back in three minutes. Hurt by a big truck? 1 800 call Ken. One call, that's all.
on your side. Chief Meteorologist Bob Jeswald has your first alert forecast. Take one last look at this gray skies, dismal, whatever you want to call it, cold, wet. Look at that moderate rain here. Just as happened to be like a light to moderate rain instead. You can see it in the little puddles here and there it is. Take one last glimpse of this because all this will be literally drained tomorrow in this forecast and replaced by a dry cool front coming in and that will reinforce some sun in this forecast coming up. You're going to like it. So today it was a chilly 44. Woo! It really warmed up then <laughs> after having 39 this morning. Nicole Phillips was talking about that. She said it was cold out there and you bet it was uh, 60 would be your average high 44 low. Look at that record low in the state uh, back in the early part of the century. Last century 14 degrees 76 degrees in 1908. You have all kinds of variants and you know when you have those mid 70s something big is looming, usually a big storm system in terms of seeing something severe. We almost hit about a half inch and I think by the time midnight rolls around, well, most of us have received about a half inch of beneficial rain that we certainly need, but now it's time to clear things out. We've been steady in the 40s as I just showed you. We slipped a few degrees from our high this afternoon. A few places like in Randolph County, 45 and you follow 45, but for the most part, Lumpkin, you guys here in parts of uh, Stewart County, we're looking at those temperatures either mid 40s and under everything north is low 40s to about 40. So in the overnight tonight, a lot of 30s here for everybody. How about that? So a colder start. This is kind of overnight the clouds, but then they will clear and you'll see that sun come in. So it'll look something like this if we simulate it for you. What happens in a situation like this? You got low pressure spinning around here. All this clear air is sinking air and it's uh, certainly designated with high pressure. That's going to scour all that out. Look at that. Lots of sun wall to wall from Texas. If you're traveling, if you get up into northern tier states, you're going to run into snow very winter like in Canada. Great Lakes, Upper Peninsula of Michigan, lake effect snow, if you're familiar with that. And that's no biggie because this time of year kind of puts you in the spirit of things, so to speak. It's nothing major. We're not seeing some huge crisis when it comes to weather. Nothing that the rocky states can't handle when it comes to snow removal. It'll be very, very easy for them. So we're getting a break this week after last week and a week before. And need I say any more? So we're going to dip down to 30s here. Right before sunrise, boom, 40. Look at look at that sun, what it does. It certainly escalates these readings into the upper 50s. Not too shabby. So you have first alert seven day forecast then. Let's rock you through the rockin' eve here as we get into almost next year, but we'll get into Christmas Eve first. Mid 30, 65, see how we warm up. Christmas Day 73. Wow. And then mostly sunny to partly sunny skies after that. Then we'll talk about the new year coming up. It's kind of hodgepodge now. Stay tuned with us because if high pressure can stay strong as it is, we may end up exiting this year on a fair note. So stay tuned with the First Alert Weather Team, Phil and Teresa. All right, thank you, Bob.